unsolved murders. But if she were the killer, how come she's wound up dead? Something's definitely not right here. So the teacup didn't break down the show, you mean? Dread was given the poison after the show went off air. He pretended to die. And these Brewer. Yes. She was a huge fan of Dread. We were given suicide. We got a whole new place. Broken glass with traces of poison. Its original shape is beyond recognition. Why would you write down about a sale unless you were going to go to it? Brewer was murdered. an accomplice of the real killer then, do you think? Killed to shut her up or someone? What do you think? Do you think she was an accomplice? Well, she must have known about the prank. She may have known about the practical joke. I don't know. That's the thing. I genuinely don't. I don't. What do you There's think? no reason to think she is an accomplice. I don't though. think she is an accomplice. I would guess you could murder your own accomplice, but there's nothing to point it in the direction of her being an accomplice. Not in this actual murder. I think she might have had something to do with the practical joke. Yeah, but that's about as far as it would go. Okay, so yeah, that's what we want to go with? Yeah. Yay, okay. I don't think Rue were in on it, actually. She left the song request stash just lying about in full view, not to mention all those sweet breakfasts. She doesn't seem to have been that bothered, really. What would you expect of a killer? Excellent deduction. I couldn't agree more. I mean, we, we agreed, but we agreed for the wrong reasons. There's too much evidence left behind in this room. If she'd known about the plan to kill Dread, she would have been tidier. She wouldn't have wanted to get caught. All likelihood, I imagine Dread approached Brewer. He would have told her of his plans for a great practical joke and asked her to help him. Oh, that makes sense. That's why she was totally unfazed after hearing Dread collapse and make notes about sales in the shops. Exactly. So, the real killer used Brewer without her even knowing about it. Kit to kill her absolute idol of all people. Yes, a contemptible trick. Murderer. Who were it then? Who's behind all this? I believe I know who it was. Do you know who it was? No. No clue at all? I mean... Following the plot... Following what we know in our interactions so far... Going off of <laughs> the game interactions... It's Holiday. Really? But, so far we based off of the game interactions. Okay. Do you? Yes. Rumor's killer and Dread's killer were one and the same. I expect that you've mostly figured it out by now, haven't you, Lucy? So, who is the real culprit in this case? These are our options. You want to go with Dolly Holiday? So far, but... I just, I don't not, think it's her. I'm not entirely sure, that's the thing. So our other options are Melody, who I don't think it is at all, because like, no. nothing has been said about her. Nothing is going I also want to no. say the same thing about Randall. Like, maybe he could have run and killed her, but like, I don't know why he would. But then why would the radio show director do anything? Because he was known to have quarreled with the victim of over money matters. That's a motive, yeah, but... I don't know, I'll go with- but like, here's the thing is that Holiday has no motive. 
Why would she kill these people? That is no real motive, no. That's the only thing that makes it, where it's like, also, one, just talking with her, it's very clear that she's not. At least to me. Yeah. That, it does seem a little clear. She's, I don't like her attitude. So the only thing that makes sense would be Mike. But, okay, do you want to go with Mike? We'll try Mike. Okay. Because I just don't think it's holiday. That doesn't make sense. It must have been the director, Mike de Bonaire. If you think about it, because, like, I don't know, he's the only one with a motive. Also, he would yeah. have access to this. He would know about this room. Fair enough. He's the only one who could have been in the right place at the right time for both murders. I agree. After Dredd's feigned death, Howard, Dade, and Smith were together the entire time. Yeah. yeah. At least I think. Did they say that in the case files? I'm no. gonna, I'm gonna go along with what the professor said. No, they didn't. It was not said in the case files. I thought it was. Okay. It was not. Well, at least, man, the sound man. I did know. Man, the sound man. Call for help from other members of staff to contact the emergency services. I knew where he was. I want to check the files to see if they actually said that. The only suspect who is on their own as events were unfolding is Dave Van Air. So if it were him then, so it were him then, without any question. Right, I'll go get someone to bring him in. Yes, there's no question that Dave Van Air is the culprit, but still, there's one final piece of the puzzle missing. Yeah, I do feel like, I do feel like there's something not, like, that it doesn't feel quite right. Like, I I still don't entirely get why he's the, I get why, but it's also like it doesn't feel like, yes, that's definitely him, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> the cases are getting harder. A little bit, yeah. Oh, good music coming up. No question now that Dave Bonaire is responsible for the deaths of Dredd and Brewer. Let's get him. Darling, I'm terribly sorry to have kept Julius. Uh, where's Dolly? She's not here! Oh, yeah? Well, that's rather strange. She said she wanted to see me. What exactly did you tell this man, Lucy? I couldn't, I just couldn't get a hold of him. In the end, I had to resort to asking Miss Holiday if she'd help. Ah, uh, that little mix. She doesn't know who she's messing with! Um, allow me to apologize, Mr. Yebonair. I had no idea this had gone on. Oh, well, no, no, not at all. I can hardly blame your lovely assistant. Um, I'm the one who talked to you. After all, if a man allows himself to be duped, it's usually for less than honorable reasons. <laughs> I don't know if that says what you wanted to say about you. Anyway, I must be getting back. Just a moment, please, Mr. De Bonaire. We do actually have a few questions we'd like to ask you. Oh, well, it's... Uh, you know, it's often, it's a pretty young girl wants to chat with an old fogey like me. So, why not? But it's better be something important enough to warrant dragging me out of bed, hmm? Um, uh, well, it's, uh, uh... Yes, this is an extremely serious matter. It seems you may well be responsible for deaths of two innocent people, you see. 
Who are you, Luther, exactly? I'm Inspector Lee, Serious Crime Division. And I'm Lacey Baker, the, assist the Inspector's Assistant. Well, it's gracious me. I thought the police were supposed to protect the public, not trick them at false meetings and the like. And falsely accusing them of murder, too. Dear, dear. I don't like you. You're a douchebag. No accusations have been yet made, Mr. Debonair. However, the evidence we have strongly suggests that you are guilty. I see. Well, it sounds rather like I'm going to need to stay, but it will have to wait. Isn't it like, no, it is late, isn't it? Because they went back late to work on this case. Yes. Good. To your best interests of cooperating with us, you only need to prove your innocence. I really, like, I was, like, questioning, I was like, are you, like, an old man sleeping in the middle of the afternoon? And then I forgot that they literally came back late. That's so, you some kind of joke. You don't see us laughing, do you, Mr. Demonair? Very well, Inspector, uh, Layman, was it? Later. Goodness, my apologies. Anyway, before I consent to helping you do investigations, I have a couple of questions of my own. Really? Go ahead. That was me. Oh. Oh well. Well, this Lizzie took your line, okay? This just was an officer involved in the investigation told me earlier. This is the first tea girl who was a wife. She committed suicide immediately afterwards. You're saying that's not the case? That this officer was mistaken. Yes. 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 What do you mean, no? Yes, game. No. Tea Lady wasn't the one who killed Mr. Dread. So she was supposed to be accused? Dear, dear, what an embarrassing mistake for you. Excuse me. These two brothers seem to have lost their age these days. Excuse me! We don't always get to the we always get to the truth in the end, don't you worry? Of course, of course. I heard it was the poison that killed Bob White. I wonder what it was the poison in. It was in the tea. You would know that, you murderer. Mr. Dredd was killed by a lethal poison that was put in the tea. Yes, this was a hug. And remind me, if you will, who was that that brought like the tea? Terribly forgetful these days. You're such a douche. It was you, you dude. No, it was a me. It was a tea lady by the name of Anise Brewer who brought the drinks into the studio. Uh, yes, of course. I remember now. Pretty young girl, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's right. She brought the tea to Dwight. Tea based with poison. You can't be sure that already contained the poison at that point in time. Oh, is that so? Well, I'm intrigued. Don't tell me that. When was the poison started? Um, after the show was interrupted. That's the only time that makes sense, yeah. That would be the time when he could get it. The 
Kazuma added to the tea after the children interrupted. Well, what an extraordinary idea. White died and the show was still on air. And yet the poison wasn't put in the cup until after that time. I don't wish to cause offense, Expector Lane. What does your assistant do? Simple, perhaps. Simple? Hey, I heard that! And my name is Layton. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, how rude of me. No, Mr. Debonair. But Miss Baker said it is absolutely right. Poison was added to the team after the show was cut short and taken off the air. I'm sure I don't need to spell out to you what that means. Sorry to disappoint you, but you've completely lost. So I'm rather too fanciful for an old chap like me. Very well. Let's take a different tack. Why don't we talk about the wig? The wig? I, I assure you, but as good as I may be, this is all my own hair. Mr. Dredd's wig. I see. Yes, Dwight's wig. Did you notice that the victim's wig had fallen off his head? As a fact, he, I did, yes. So that dreadnought to mess fell off the poor man's head as he killed over onto the floor. After Dread has, uh, when I ran over to Dwight, his wig has fallen off his head. I saw the massive dreadlock fall, which is so nice. Okay, so D uh, Dwight was in the studio after we collapsed. Okay. Um, Mike was in the studio. After Dwight collapsed, Melody uh, went, left the studio, went to the waiting room, and was with Dolly the whole time. Okay, it was listening. Okay, it was changed. We it. just only saw one thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's very strange. Yes, we have another witness's statement that completely contradicts what you said. According to that statement. There we are. Dolly said it. It's Dolly to the rescue. Dolly said the wig didn't fall off. Mr. Dredd collapsed during the show. His wig was definitely still on his head. That's what this witness told us. The person in question even went so far as to say how shocking it was to see the victim without his wig. Oh, um. Oh, yes, of course. I'm terribly sorry, you're quite right. I have mixed things up in my head. Yes, when Dwight actually collapsed, it's true. His wig didn't come off. It must have been when I ran over him and shook him. But how can I see it? It's in the blind That must have been when it happened. He must have shaken his wig off his head. When I ran over to Dwight, his wig had not fallen off his head. I suppose I shook him too hard. His wig fell off then. I was besides myself with worry, you see. I see. I do apologize for getting so puzzled up. I can't understand, Mr. Debonair. People's memory is a very curious thing. Yes, quite. There's just one other thing I think I'd like to double check with you. Did you notice Mr. Jet drinking his tea as all? 
Oh yes, it's not even drinking. It's pretty sure he beat one of those macaroons first. No doubt that made him first, and only to the sip of tea that he suddenly would choke. But first, I think you're dead. I see. After Dwight didn't eat one of those macaroons, he definitely had a sip of tea. That's when he began to rise in pain. The poison must have been in the juice. Here's another discrepancy. The same statement is a different story. And that statement is ho Dolly Holiday. Mr. Dread never touched his tea. Know what I mean? <laughs> that is a mix again. Do you really think you can rely on what Don't she language, tells you? Sure. Sorry. The woman's a serial liar. Boy, she even lied to me in order to get me to this meeting, for goodness sake! Or have you conveniently forgotten that little fact already? Another? I've made a mental note of it. Then surely you would seriously consider taking her word over mine! Please, Mr. Debonair, there's no need to raise voices. Perhaps we all need to come in there. A spot of radio, maybe? Sorry, calm down. We've got a very special guest in the studio today, people. It's the drop dead gorgeous Miss Dolly Holiday! Aw, oh, Dwight, it's terrific to be here on the show. Here, I brought you something. They're ever so tasty. Ah, oh, thanks, Dolly. That sounds like a fax coming in already. So, our first request this morning is from, uh, Miss Angel O. Death? I'll be the death of you. Whoa! Sounds like someone wants to turn DJ Dwight Dread into DJ Dwight Dead. Don't you go down on me, Dwight. I'd never live it down. Well, if I'm about to sign off for the last time ever, allow me to try one of your mouth-watering offerings first. That hit the spot. Mm. Uh. 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 Oi! What's going on? What's going on? Dwight! Are you alright? Let's, uh, go into an ad break. Come on, quickly! The Grand Parents Tales now on. No store has more or less, so get down to Daybridge today. This is a recording of the show. Is this your idea of a joke? Quite a lot worked together for a great many years, you know. Do you think I enjoyed listening to my partner? No, my friend. Suffering over and over again? Very sorry for this causing you any distress. However, this recording actually proves this holiday statement is true. I don't understand. Rusty, would you get to explain?
If I'm correct, this should be it. Yay! Okay. They were a broken teacup at the scene of the crime. But not even a hint of the sound of china breaking on the, or the recording of the show. Well, obviously the microphone just didn't pick it up. How did you know it really is all about radio? Mike defective. Clearly they get the sound of the some collapsing. I would expect the noise of the cup smashing, even more clearly audible. How is this even irrelevant? It was the dear girl who poisoned this drink. We all know that! Does it really matter whether you can hear a teacup breaking on the recording or not? I mean, I ask you! It matters a great deal. A cup that didn't break is broken. A wind that didn't fall off. Oh. It's not that one witness or another failed to spot something. Inconsistency. Sorry. <laughs> I had to point out that one. No. The crime scene changed subtly between the transmission being interrupted and the police arriving. Thank you. The question is that, why? How on earth should I know? Miss Baker and I have come up with a hypothesis. We speculated that when the victim collapsed during the show, he was in fact pretending to die. Oh, don't be absurd, man! I, too, thought it unbelievable first. But if you accept that, everything else falls into place. Will you see? Mr. Dredd and yourself discussed the idea of a practical joke before the show. You probably fixed it on him drinking some tea and then starting his Oh no, I'm dying bit! But when they came to the black show, Mr. Dredd improvised a few changes. Instead of the tea that kicked everything off, he went from one of Miss Holiday's macaroons. After the performance, once everyone had left to the studio, Mr. Dredd got up. Mr. Holiday and Miss Smith were them in the waiting room, and Mr. Rand had to talk to the police. We should leave only one other person in the studio. You, Mr. De Bonaire. No doubt you made a fuss over Mr. Dredd and how great he'd been. Then, and then you offered him some tea. Tea laced with poison, that is. The poison hit him that bad. He dropped the teacup and it smashed on the floor. And, and as he crashed to the floor himself, his wig flew off his head. It's these few minor details that will cause the inconsistencies at the scene. Though Mr. Dredd collapsed after eating the macaroon, the poison was found in the tea. And though his wig was still on his head after he collapsed on the show, later it was found lying on the floor. Aye, and that's the real truth behind the death of DJ White. Red, and 